Just like any other timer, there are two terminals that will activate the timer to start counting for the particular time that you will set here. Okay, so if you look here, one of the terminals is marked A1. And then the second terminal for the timer coil is marked A2. Good. Then we have other terminals marked 1, 2, and then 3. Okay. These three terminals work like a two-way switch, meaning that there is a common, and then there is a normally closed contact, and then a normally opened contact. So for this particular timer, we are going to use the two as the common. Two is normally closed to one. So before the timer gets activated, two is continuous with one. And we can simply check that using the multimeter. So this is uh, terminal one. If you are using terminal two as common, let's see what happens. So terminal one, and then terminal two. Okay, so that is normally closed. Let's check terminal two and terminal three. So this is terminal two already, and then terminal three here. Okay, so no continuity. All right, so let's look at how the timer works in drawing. So as you can clearly see, there are two sides of the timer. So at the top, we have one, two, three terminals. And then at the bottom also, we have one, two, three terminals. At the top, we have the terminals labeled A1. This is two, and this is A3. Then at the bottom, we have them labeled one, three, and then A2. So these are the terminals of the timer I have just showed. Now, the terminals marked A1, A2 are the connections that will energize a coil in the timer. So basically, depending on the type of timer you are using, a time is set, and then when the time is up, switching is done either by electronic means or by a simple magnetic core. All right, so the terminals that do the switching to supply power to the next device are these one, two, and then three terminals. These two, one, three terminals operate or work just like a two-way switch. So initially, two is normally close to one. And then when supply is applied to A1 and A2, and depending on the time that you set on the timer, when that time is up, then this flips from one to three. Now, what causes this to change from one to three could either be electronic or by a simple magnetic core. For the sake of this explanation, I'm going to, to do the demonstration using a coil. But it is not always that a coil connects between A1 and A2 on every timer. All right, so let's say there is a magnetic coil here that is connected between A2 and then A1, like this. So if we have to connect an output to switch on another device from this timer, we are going to take that output connection from terminal three. So this can connect to a relay so that as soon as the time set here is up, that relay becomes energized. So we can decide to connect neutral to A1 and then live to A2 or live to A1, neutral to A2. All right. So for the tense timer that we are using in our eight years, so there is an A3 terminal, it's actually out of use, so we are not going to connect anything to this A3. So A3 is totally out of our connection. Alright, so if this video makes sense to you, don't forget to hit on the like, share with others, and then subscribe to stay connected. More explanations like this will be coming to make our series on how to wire a manual and automatic changeover switch. 
very simple to understand and then follow the connections all right so see you again in our next episode on how to wire a dual mode changeover switch that can either operate fully automatically or manually